Hello, welcome to my building a CRUD web application with Spring Boot. I hope you have enjoyed my last video about how to build a Spring Boot application from scratch. Um, today, I'm going to show how to build a simple CRUD application. In order to do that, I came up with another short to-do list. So, we are going to reuse our first application from the last video. Step number two, you're going to add some new dependencies to the POM file and modify the packaging type. So we'll be able to run as a jar file. We're going to add the Spring Boot Starter Time Leaf, which is the template engine we're going to use. It's similar to FreeMarker or Velocity. It has a different syntax, but that's the same concept. We will also need to use the data JPA uh, in order to talk to the, the database, to save entities, pull it back from the database. And lastly, we will need a database itself. So just to make things as simple as possible, let's use any memory one, which is a H2 database. After completing those two steps, we'll be able to create our controller, domain class, and create the view, or the views, actually. So the idea is to be able to post, to, to enter a post entry, and delete, and update that entry as well. And let's run the application. So let's get down to business. First thing we are going to do is to change the POM configuration. So we're going to package as a jar file. We can remove the provided Tomcat because from now on, it's gonna be packaged inside the jar file. And we can also remove the JUnit dependence as we're not going to use it right now. So let's add the time relief dependency. That's it first dependence. Let's add the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. That's the second dependency. And the last dependency is our in-memory database. And that's it. So I'm not specifying anything in here. There is no custom configuration to tell Spring Boot what to do. So Spring Boot takes a very opinionated view about how to build Spring applications. So it expects us to put things on the right place. And it relies on convention over configuration, which is extremely cool. So no more XML hell and all the customer configurations, uh, unless we really need to do that, but we don't. So we can keep going. Second thing we're going to do is to remove this class. It's the reload controller from my last video. It does not add any value here, just to map uh, a path slash and saying hello world so we can remove it. That's it. We can now um, start from the step number three, which is create our controller, domain class, and view. Let's start by creating our controller. So let me add a new package called controllers, and let me add a post controller. That's basically a plain node Java class. First thing is to annotate as controller. So Spring Framework can detect and make the proper setup. Uh, second annotation here is the request mapping. Okay. Which path it's going to respond to, slash posts. That's it. So now we need uh, something to a list of posts. That's it. We need a method that we can show a list of posts. So 
let's start building something. This post is going to receive a model. A model is an object, then we can bind data to the view. So we can let the view only handling UI logic. So let me import this dependence of the Spring Framework UI model. Yep, that's it. Uh, public typo here. And for the moment, we can simply return the view itself. So it's going to be a view called post slash list. And that's it. And I also need to add another request mapping here. Same value equals to blank, which means whenever I type in my browser slash posts, it will push to this method, which has blank, which is the same thing as slash posts. And also, it will respond to the request method get. So I'm being a bit restrict restrictive here and allowing only requests. So get requests actually. So I think we are now good to go. We can run it for the first time. Let's build and run our application. All good. So we can run our application. Yeah, and it fails. That because, as I said, Spring Boot is very opinionated in how to build Spring applications. So it expects us to have a template uh, folder as we said on our pom file that we're using a time leaf template, which means we need templates. So let's add that folder. Um, yep, main. Let's add a resources folder. Inside the resources folder, another folder called templates. And then we can add another folder called posts. That's it. Uh, this is basically for um, organization. So if I wanted, I could just simply dump uh, everything inside the same folder, but it's not very organized thing to do. So it's better to um, just split by, by controller. It's a good practice anyway. So inside our list, let's let me simply pull uh, word. Simply type something. And that's it. Let me build application again and run one more time. Okay, now time to open a browser. Oh, post. Posts. That's it. Hello world. So I just got there. Very nice. Okay, next step is to create a domain model capable of express expressing what we need, which is to uh, define a post. Again, let me add a new package called domain and create a class called post. Again, it's a plain old Java object. First annotation is entity, so it's a JPA entity. Um, a field ID, which will have 
an annotation called ID. And also I need a generated value annotation strategy generate type auto. So it will make this field an auto increment field. Uh, very cool. Next field, a field called message. So that's the field we're going to store uh, our posts. And my default constructor. And also, let me create my getters and setters. That's it. So, just remove the set ID. Don't like the idea anyone else is setting my ID. Okay, next step, we are going to need a repository. The repository is a component that is able to um, talk to the database, pull and save entities. So Spring uh, Boot Data also brings us this facility. Um, okay, actually it's an interface, but I can change it later. Post, yeah, post and post story. That's basically it. We say now that it's going to extend a CRUD repository. So Spring uh, Boot Data, Spring Data Commons brings us a lot of methods that allows us to manipulate the entities uh, into the, da the database and also pull it back. Okay, that's really what we need. Okay, so let's change uh, the post controller again. Let's add here a list of posts. Okay, my model now ha holds an attribute called posts, which I'm going to get from the repository. And the repository, I just I can simply inject here using the annotation auto added and saying uh, what's the field which you hold that information in. I can remove my to do as well. Okay, uh, it's time to start uh, filling in my list with something meaningful. Uh, let me add a simple table here. And it's a bas basically a simple table uh, where I have a link to add a new post. And I have here a list of posts. So, as I said before here, in my post controller, I'm uh, appending all posts to this variable posts. Same repository, just get me all posts you can find in the database. In here, I have my posts uh, object. This is the time leaf syntax. So you can uh, go deeper on the time leaf website. So it's a kind of for each. So for each post in posts, just do whatever you want to do. And then I can start binding uh, that object to my cells on the table. So I also have uh, a cell that will allow me to build a link to delete. So I'll have a path variable uh, hooking to the post ID in order to delete. And the same thing to edit, which we'll vis uh, revisit later. Okay, uh, I believe that's pretty much it. So we can run our application again. A 
let's view it. Run it again. Okay, that's it. So I have an oil link and I have my templates here. So just in order to have a test data, um, I'm going to make a modification here. I'm saying implement snow command line runner and implement methods. So I can just add uh, codes on my startup. So what I'm going to do is to add a uh, few posts there just for our test purpose. So we need the reports are here as well. And then we can add a code here that will add few entries. Again, this code here is simply for testing purpose, so uh, there are better ways of uh, <coughs> set up data uh, without having to do into the main class. So let me change here. Let me create another, another constructor. to make it happy. Very well, let's run again. Okay, so that's it. We have five entries in there. Okay, uh, next step now is to build the proper template uh, itself, the layout template. As we're doing here, we simply have a plain HTML which does not have any, any CSS or nothing associated with it. So we're going to add now a main template. Um, I just got this template from Twitter Bootstrap. got one of their templates and examples yeah just got this template and yeah that's pretty simple just view page source and we can reuse the HTML as is pretty basic stuff let's then add a file called layouts.html and let's move it to the templates folder. That's it. Yep. So that's basically the same Twitter bootstrap. The only thing, uh, the only few things I modified here is where to get um, the resources here from the CDN and jQuery as well and don't need this one and also adding a layout fragment here called content which means that um, time if we read this template here it's a master template and we will inject inside this area whatever we say references this fragment okay which means what I, what I'm going to do now is to inject the contents of list in here and I'm going to show you how so it's pretty simple we need only to add two tags in here. The first tag in here is a decorator and the decorator name, layout, it's the same name as the template. Let me close it. 
second tag is the fragment itself, which is a div. Uh, let me close it before I forget. Yeah. Fragment content. If you go there, fragment content. So um, <clears throat> timely if you simply inject that content in here. So and in the layout template, which is my decorator, I have all the CSS and the JavaScript and the markup, the basic markup I need. So that's a basic Twitter bootstrap. Uh, let me run it again, just to have a taste of it. That's it. And voila. So we kind of have it right. Um, only missing things is the custom CSS. That page I showed you guys. It has. Uh, yeah, a custom CSS. Which we have to deploy here. inside static CSS. Just add here, actually static. CSS. Okay, it seems that I can doesn't let me do that. Let me try again. Sources. Okay. I just place my custom CSS in here. That's it. Let's run again. Just to double check. Yeah, everything is fine. Okay, that's it. So we have uh, our layout working. We have our list, and we list the post. Uh, text and we have two actions one to delete and another one to edit so let's now go to these two actions okay uh, we need one action now um, to delete It's basically a path, so slash posts, pass an ID, delete, and you send me a get. So I have a path variable here, which is which comes from here, and I simply delete, ask the repository to delete that entity and redirect to the posts which will push to the list. Okay. Um, And that's it. Cool. Uh, just build again and run one more time. That's it. If you want to delete the post number two, that's it. Post number two vanished. So now let's let's do the add posts and edit posts. So we need uh, two more templates here inside posts. It's gonna be new and edit posts new and edit. It's a basic form, 
So I'm using the same layout decorator. I'm use I'm injecting inside the same fragment in there. Uh, simple form here. I have a text area and a submit button. The edit is exactly the same template. I just copied and paste. There are better ways of doing that. And yeah, the path is different. Instead of create, that's gonna take update. Create here, new. Edit is gonna take update. And I also populate the message field with the object where uh, which I am editing. So once I click on that, on that link, I'll pass to the controller, the controller will load, and then I pass back to the view. That's basically it. Let's now add the remaining methods. I need one method to return the template new. So slash new returns the empty template. Another method to receive the request and save my post, which is slash create, that comes, that handles this form, post, to receive a post. And we also need an update. So create, uh, save a new post, getting the comment, and redirects to the post list. The same thing for the update. I receive the post ID and the message that comes from the form. I load that post, set the new message, save, and redirect to the list. So that's it. Let's run it again and see if everything is fine. Oh good, so all posts, I have five posts now, I can add a new post, my latest post, submit, get the post created here, I can delete a post, post number one, vanish it, I can edit a post, let me edit post number five, and oops, Something wrong happened there. Yeah, of course, I don't have the method to edit. Just forgot that. Let me add a method to edit. The same thing, you receive the parameter for the for from the form, the path variable, uh, we bind to, uh, <coughs> to an ID, load from the repository, populate the model, and pass it back to the form. And the for, in the form, I'll bind those values to the fields. And that's basically it. Let me run again. Go to posts. Yep, new post. Remove something, edit post number five, update it, and that's it. So I hope you have enjoyed my how to build a CRUD web application with Spring Boot. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.